Before 9 o'clock, thank you for tuning in to WOCA, The Source. This is News Talk Radio, and this segment puts the news back into the News Talk format. We have as much news as we can possibly fit in 23 minutes ready to deliver to you. The news stories you'll hear during this segment are fresh, right off the press, sometimes just minutes ago, and we will let you know where we got them from so you can look them up. We do not deliver the entire story to you. What we do is we summarize it. We give you the gist of it. More than the headline, but less than the whole story. And um, Robin and I tag team it, going back and forth. I guess that's what we call it, tag team, right? All right, so the first one is this from the Associated Press. The partial shutdown of the U.S. government weighed on markets today through mounting hopes that Italy's government will win a confidence vote pushed the Milan index to a two-year high. The political upheavals in Washington, D.C. and Rome have been the main points of focus in financial markets this week, while the gridlock in the U.S. capital shows few signs of resolution developments in Italy point to a crisis averted. In a surprise move, Silvio Berlusconi announced that his party will vote to support the government of Premier Enrico Letta, a major turnaround that signals he was defeated in his efforts to bring down the government. With Letta's government poised to continue, Italian shares have surged. Milan's FTSEM IB was up one and a half percent at eighteen thousand two hundred forty-two. In president, in President Barack Obama's address to the United Nations yesterday, he told the assembled leaders, and this is a quote: "The world is more stable than it was five years ago." He also claimed that Al Qaeda does not have the capacity to carry out attacks like the one on 9/11, but it does pose serious threats partly as a result of the U.S. winding down two wars and because of U.S. cooperation with its allies and partners. Uh, President Obama is quoted as saying, the world is more stable than it was five years ago, but dangers remain. This is from CNS News. Mm. The Associated Press has this story. Monsanto says its financial loss widened in the agribusiness giant's fiscal fourth quarter as sales of biotech seeds dropped. The St. Louis company recorded a loss of $249 million, or 47 cents per share, for the quarter ending August 31st. That compares with a loss of $264 million, or 42 cents per share, in the 2012 period. Revenue climbed 5% to $2.2 billion. Analysts expected a loss of 43 cents per share on sales of $2.26 billion. Monsanto's fiscal 2014 guidance all came in below Wall Street expectations. Shares fell in pre-market trading. Separately, Monsanto said it plans to purchase farming software and data from the Climate Corporation for $930 million in cash. The company's technology uses weather forecasting and data analysis to help farmers with planting and harvests. And just a little opinion from me, we've had so many authors talking about the genetically modified seeds that they've Mm -hmm. been putting out there, and so many people have been opposed to that. It just might be one of the reasons why they are suffering in, in the pocketbook. This is a story from Newsday. President Nicolas Maduro from Venezuela said yesterday that Venezuela will not have cordial relations with the United States as long as U.S. diplomats continue what he alleges are attempts to destabilize his country. He's quoted as saying new points of contact can be established, but only if Washington, D.C. ends such activity. Maduro's tough talk came a day after he announced the expulsion of the top U.S. diplomat in Venezuela, charged a Fair Kelly Caterling and two other embassy officials alleging they conspired with the extreme right to sabotage the economy and power grid. 
Next story from the Florida News Network. The Jacksonville International Airport was evacuated yesterday evening while authorities investigated a pair of suspicious packages in different parts of the airport. According to at least one published account, an airport official said one package had been found in a terminal and another had been found in a parking garage. According to a tweet on the airport's official Twitter site, the airport was evacuated due to, quote, police activity regarding suspicious packages, unquote. The account also noted that passengers on inbound flights, which had landed prior to the evacuation, would be bussed to off-property hotels as transportation became available to them. According to observers, police had blocked off the entrance to the airport. Activity like that is often seen as precautionary, part of a system of measures taken to ensure the general safety as an investigation gets underway. By the way, the last line says, as of last night, there have been no reports of the nature of the suspicious packages. And when, when after Robin reads her story, I believe there is an update on that, and I'll find it. This is from Fox News. A federal judge yesterday revisited at a decades-old court settlement restricting how the New York Police Department conducts surveillance after civil rights lawyers accused the department of breaking those rules by monitoring Muslims. The dispute centers on the restrictions set by the Hanshu Decree, which was put in place in response to surveillance used against war prote- protesters in the 1960s and 70s. The decree was relaxed following the September 11th 2001 terror attacks to allow police to more freely monitor political activity in public places. All right, let me read the update that I have uh, on the airport package. Um, all right, this is from the Washington Post. Let's see. Uh, I, I believe they do did find it, uh, a package. Let me see. Let me see what it says here. Okay, sorry for this. It's taking a little time. I have to watch an advertisement here. Um, <laughs> Suspect in custody after suspicious devices prompted evacuation at Jacksonville Airport. Authorities have a suspect in custody after finding two suspicious packages, including one they described as destructive at the Jacksonville International Airport. In other words, it was not a false alarm. Uh, Zelchko uh, Kosovic was booked into the Jacksonville County Jail early this morning and is being held without bond on charges that include making a false report about planting a bomb or explosive. Okay. Officials say 39-year-old Kosovic will be in bond court at 1.30 today. This afternoon, the airport was shut down. Okay. Well, maybe there was... Oh, anyway, they were, so they arrested somebody. Apparently, there was... Oh, thank I don't God. know. It's confusing, confusing headlines there. The second-in-command of the U.S. military's nuclear combat forces has been suspended during an investigation into illegal gambling. Navy Vice Admiral Timothy Giardini was removed from duty on, on September the 3rd, a U.S. official has just stated. Admiral Giardina was serving as the deputy in charge of the U.S. Strategic Command, which oversees nuclear assets. Assets. He has not been arrested or charged as part of the inquiry into possible use of counterfeit casino chips. The Admiral, a career submarine officer, was referred to the U.S. Naval Criminal Investigative Service after he became suspected in a case involving a casino in western Iowa. This is from the BBC. And this is from ABC. Legal proceedings against five Guantanamo Bay prisoners charged in the September 11th attack should go forward. A military judge ruled yesterday rejecting a bid to put the case on hold until the Pentagon resolves computer network security concerns. Army Colonel James Pohl said the steps announced by Pentagon officials to address concerns raised by the defense are adequate to keep pretrial hearings moving for the five prisoners charged with orchestrating the terrorist attack. The defendants are facing trial by military commission at the U.S. base in Cuba on charges that include nearly 3,000 counts of murder, terrorism, and hijacking for their alleged roles planning and aiding the worst terror attack on U.S. soil. They face the death penalty if convicted. The Washington Post now belongs to Amazon founder Jeff Bezos. The Washington Post said yesterday that it had completed the sale of the newspaper publishing business to Bezos, who said in August he was buying it for $250 million. The soon-to-be-renamed Washington Post company is retaining the Kaplan Education Business, Slate Magazine, The Root.com, and Foreign Policy Magazine, as well as the Post headquarters building in downtown Washington. Bezos' newspaper will lease space in the building, according to the Las Vegas Sun. 
One of Florida's long-timer death row inmates was put to death last night at the Florida State Prison. Marshal Lee Gore was executed for the murder of a South Florida exotic dancer. According to court records, Gord had also been convicted of killing a second woman. Yesterday marked the fourth time his execution had been scheduled. The execution was put on hold twice because of insanity claims and once because of a scheduling conflict. The U.S. Supreme Court turned back a final appeal just one hour before Gore's execution execution on his final death warrant. According to corrections officials who presided over the execution as well as witnesses, the sentence was carried out with an antiseptic professionalism. All went well with the process and Gore's death was uneventful. A federal judge ruled Monday evening that the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee could indeed proceed with a lawsuit against the Justice Department to access certain Fast and Furious documents. Attorney General Eric Holder had attempted to dismiss the suit, but U.S. District Court Judge Amy Berman Jackson turned aside that request, asserting the House claim President Obama could not claim executive privilege and halt certain Operation Fast and Furious records from being turned over to Congress for review. This is from the Washington Times. And this is from the Associated Press. It started with an arson investigation, led to an affair revelation, and finally to the resignation of a longtime Northern California prosecutor, Carl Adams, for three decades, the district attorney of Sutter County, announced yesterday that he will step down just hours after his former lover accused police in an Associated Press article of overreaching when they counted him as a suspect in the lowly arson case that aroused suspicions and exposed his affair with the victim, who was a paid escort. Sarah Garibay said she'd called Adams for advice and support when her house burned in July. Yuba City Police say Adams' interest in the case on top of the woeful texts sent to Garibay proclaiming jealousy of her other suitors aroused their suspicions and prompted them last month to name him as an arson fire suspect in a search warrant affidavit. Wow. South Korea displayed its longest-range missile capable of striking all of North Korea and other sophisticated weapons at a massive military parade yesterday, a display of force meant to show Pyongyang that any provocation would be met with strong retaliation. It was South Korea's biggest Armed Forces Day ceremony in a decade and the first since North Korea conducted its third atomic test and threatened nuclear war earlier this year. About 11,000 troops, 190 weapon systems, and other other equipment and 120 aircraft were featured in the parade at a military airport just south of Seoul. Among them were GPS guided Hyunu 3 cruise missiles with a range of 620 miles that South Korea developed in recent years. It was the first time the domestic the domestically built Hyum U-3 was publicly shown, according to Seoul's defense ministry. This is from Fox News. And this is from Reuters. Treasury Secretary Jacob Liu said late yesterday that he has now been begun using all the extraordinary measures at his disposal to avoid hitting the debt ceiling. In a letter to congressional leaders, Liu said that he started to use the final three bookkeeping tools available to provide borrowing room for paying the nation's bills. Liu said that there are no other legal and prudent options for extending the borrowing authority. Liu said that his assessment of the date he will run out of maneuvering room had not changed from last week. Liu told Congress on September 25th that the extraordinary measures would be exhausted no later than October 17th, and at that time the government would have about $30 billion in cash on hand. U.S. pharmaceutical giant Merck has announced it will cut 8,500 further jobs in an attempt to cut $2.5 billion from its costs by 2015. The company's shares rose 2.35% to $48.73 per share in New York trading after it announced the cuts. The new losses, combined with 7,500 job cuts announced in 2011 and 2012, amount in total to 20% of its workforce. Merck said it will be shifting its focus to areas it sees as high growth, such as cancer treatment. 
difficult decisions. It is also pulling products in late stage trials it estimates will not be so successful and licensing other products to alternative companies. This is from the BBC. And you're listening to News Bites on WOCA The Source. This is the segment of AM Ocala Live where each weekday morning we read to you the stories from around the world, the state, and uh, the nation. And we try to do that in summarized form so you get as much news in this 23 minute segment as possible. And the next one is from the Associated Press and it did come across the wires at uh, just two minutes ago and this is what it says an explosive device has caused a blast inside a large cathedral in the northeastern Spanish city of Zaragoza while parishioners were inside but no one was hurt a spokesman for the regional government in Zaragoza said the explosion happened at about 1.50 p.m. local time inside the Basilica of Our Lady of the Pillar and that people inside were evacuated over concerns that there might be more devices. He says no one was hurt and spoke on condition of anonymity because of department rules preventing him from being named. The spokesman says no group has taken responsibility. He could not immediately provide details on damage to the interior of the cathedral pope john paul visited that cathedral in 1984 the american public wasn't clamoring for military intervention in bosnia nearly two decades ago but former president bill clinton says former policy decisions cannot be made by the polls clinton rallied u.s allies to support airstrikes to end the ethnic killings in the region in the 1990s but some of more than 300 recently released documents show that gaining support for u.s intervention in bosnia was not an easy sell clinton spoke about the conflict during a symposium yesterday in Little Rock, Arkansas. He also praised the CIA's release of newly declassified documents about intelligence and presidential policy making during the Bosnian conflict. This is from Newsday. And this is from ABC News. House Democrats frustrated by the lack of action by House leadership and fearing all hope of a bipartisan comprehensive immigration reform bill is lost are expected to introduce an immigration bill of their own today. House sources tell reporters the Democratic bill will mirror the bipartisan legislation passed by the Senate in late June, including both increased border security and a pathway to citizenship for the 11 million undocumented immigrants. Congressional aides who uh, have seen the bill say much of it came from the months of work done by the Gang of Seven before it broke apart in the House late last month with influential Republicans abandoning the effort over disagreements on health care costs. The new bill, which is expected to be introduced on the floor today, is purely a Democratic Party effort designed, according to sources, to put pressure on Republican leadership in the House who have refused to support a comprehensive bill in favor of a piecemeal series of laws, none of which so far includes the critical pathway to citizenship component so important to the Hispanic community. This is from Reuters. Technical glitches stalled to yesterday's launch of new insurance exchanges at the heart of President Barack Obama's health care reform law, a slow start that could fuel the political debate over providing millions of uninsured Americans with coverage. The administration went ahead with opening day for a six-month enrollment period on the state marketplaces or exchanges, despite a partial federal government shutdown precipitated by Republican opposition to the health care law that deadlocked a spending bill in Congress. A Missouri husband and wife in their 70s are in jail and awaiting extradition on charges that they each carried out murders in two different cold cases more than 30 years ago. Alice Uden is 74 years old and her husband Gerald Uden, who is 71 years old, both from Chadwick, Missouri, are facing first degree murder charges for allegedly killing their ex-spouses and children. According to a Wyoming Division of Criminal Investigation news release, they are both in custody in Christian County Jail in Missouri awaiting extradition to Wyoming. The Fremont County Sheriff's Office in Wyoming was investigating the disappearance of Gerald Uden's ex-wife and her children when they learned that his current wife, Alice, may have been involved in the murder of her ex-husband in a nearby Wyoming county years earlier, according to the arrest affidavit. When Alice Uden was arrested on September 26, she offered up information that allowed authorities 
to arrest her husband the next day, according to the Christian County Sheriff's Department news release. Little is known about the couple's relationship, when they met or when they married, but the closeness in timing, alleged weapon of choice, and the state of killings took place appear to have uncanny similarities. Still, Laramie County District Attorney Scott Homer said there was no information on their connection at this time. Interesting story. The U.S. manufacturing sector expanded last month at its fastest pace in almost two and a half years, according to an industry report that was released yesterday. The Commerce Department's construction spending report, which had been expected at 10 a.m. EST, Eastern Standard Time, was delayed due to the government's partial shutdown. The Institute for Supply Management said its index of national factory activity rose to 56.2 in September from 55.7 in August marking its highest level since April 2011. The report showed that firms added the most workers in 15 months during September, according to NBC News. Now, you might have this story on your list, Robin. This is an update of Tropical Storm Jerry. Uh, Tropical Storm Jerry is drifting westward in the Atlantic with little change in strength. The storm's maximum sustained winds early this morning were near 40 miles per hour. The storm is centered about 1,275 miles east of of Bermuda and is moving west at one mile per hour. The storm is not currently threatening any land. Storm, uh, tropical Storm Jerry is the 10th tropical storm of the Atlantic hurricane season. Nearly 1,000 Iraqis were killed in September, one of the highest monthly death tolls in years. The UN gave that report yesterday. They gave a somber figure that reflects the militants' determination to rekindle large-scale sectarian conflict. Iraq is going through its worst surge in violence since 2008 with near daily militant attacks and relentless bombings blamed on hardline Sunni insurgents. The surge followed a deadly crackdown by the Shiite-led government on a Sunni protest camp in northern Iraq in April. More than 5,000 people have been killed since then, according to CBS News. South Korea displayed its longest range missile capable of striking all of North Korea and other sophisticated weapons at a massive military parade yesterday, a display of force meant to show Pyongyang that any provocation would be met with strong retaliation. It was South Korea's biggest armed forces day ceremony in a decade and the first since North Korea conducted its third atomic test and threatened nuclear war earlier this year. About 11,000 troops, 190 weapons systems and other equipment and 120 aircraft were featured in the parade at a military airport just south of Seoul. Among them were GPS-guided Hyunmu-3 cruise missiles with a range of 620 miles that South Korea developed in recent years. It was the first time the domestically built missiles were publicly shown, according to Seoul's Ministry of Defense. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights released a report yesterday stating that more than 115,000 people have been killed in Syria's two-and-a-half-year-old civil war, including tens of thousands of soldiers, rebels, and civilians. The figure suggested that around 5,000 people had died in September alone and that the bloodshed has not been slowed by an international deal for the elimination of Syria's chemical weapons after an August 21st sarin gas attack in the Damascus area. This is from the Jerusalem Post. All right. You've been listening to News Bites. That's the last story for now. And uh, we do this each weekday morning. It gives you an opportunity to catch up on the news happening around the world, around the nation, and around the state so that you can be up on it. There's a lot of news that happens every day. We try our best to bring them to you as fresh as possible. We shrink them as small as possible and hopefully inform you as good as, as well as possible. <laughs> the uh, whole idea, put news back in news talk. We do it each morning, each weekday morning from about... Seven, uh, I'm sorry, eight thirty-five or so until nine. Mm-hmm. Robin, how many did we do today? Twenty-nine. Twenty. We beat our record. I think that's a record. Yeah. Twenty-nine. We beat our other. Record. Twenty-nine. That's because I didn't promote the show. <laughs> Because I do. I'll I'll stop and I'll promote the show. That's right. Uh, So let me promote the show. If you would like to sponsor this or any segment on WOCA The Source, you could come by the studios. They're beautiful. Sit across the desk from Joe Martone or Tish Muller or Dan Martone. They'll tell you what you need to do. It's easy. It's affordable. It's very effective. And we're right here at the Paddock Mall. Or you can give us a call, 732-8000, and ask for Joe, Dan, or Tish. We'll take a little break and be right back. I think Maestro Matthew Wardell. He's in the building, right? With Kristen. With Kristen. Yep.
and did she have her cello? Yes, she did. All right. Can't wait. Can't wait. We'll be right back. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! ABC News Now. I'm Karen Chase. Stock futures are pointing to a drop at the opening bell as Wall Street worries that the government shutdown will drag on. Because of the stoppage, the September jobs report may not come out this Friday. Americans are instantly venting their rage on Twitter in 140 characters or less at hashtag DearCon.